You're listening to Experience Imagination, a themed entertainment design podcast presented by Falcons Creative Group. Every episode, we discuss a new topic with a panel of creative professionals. Hi, I'm Cecil McPurry, President and Chief Creative Officer of Falcons. Welcome to another episode of Experience Imagination. I'm your moderator, Audrey DeLong. Today, we're going to discuss another wing of Falcons, if you will, that audiences may not be familiar with, and that is software development. We're going to shine a spotlight on one product in particular, which is called Aeon XP Ecosystem, and we're very happy to be talking with a few special guests later on who will help us explore the birth of this unique offering and everything it will mean to guests and operators. But first, I'm joined by Cecil Magpuri. Hey there, Cecil. Hey, how you doing? We're good. How are you? Well, I'm very excited. You know, we've been working on this for so long, and I am so excited that it's going to be revealed Mm -hmm. to our listeners. All right. Well, tell us about the inception, first of all, of the software development team here. You know, we've oftentimes get hired to ideate master plans, attractions, etc. And I would say over a decade ago, there were these concepts about how to integrate the gaming industry of giving guest agency and trying to merge that with the brick and mortar world. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of different desires for entertainment that could take advantage of some of the gaming technologies, but difficult to apply how that would actually work. Well, I think we cracked the code on how that works. And so as we progressed in our own process, you know, having our X labs, our own unique pipeline for content development, the brain trust that we have here is incredible. Uh, the savants <laughs> that we have mm-hmm. on our team. And so we have a quarterly brainstorming session, and this was several years ago, where I had elevated that desire of integrating the two kind of worlds into one. And guess what? <laughs> they solved it, you know, in theory. And so we continued to ideate the execution of it and the flexibility of this basically full stack software development a solution that allows guests to have agency in a park and continue their journey pre and post. We were able to invest, add additional resources to the team, and now we have basically a full software development team in our studios, which is pretty exciting. All right. Well, later in the episode, we're going to sit down with Scott Demereau, who is the CEO and co-founder of Katmandu, to get his take on all of this. But first, we want to have a conversation with Jason Ambler and Saham Ali, who will give us insight into this extraordinary new product. Cecil, we look forward to hearing your thoughts later on. I really look forward to our guests talking about Aeon XP ecosystem. Let's get into it. We want to welcome back to the podcast two guys from our team that our listeners will probably recognize. Hello again, Jason and Saham. Hi. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. So I'm Jason Ambler. I'm VP of Digital Media and Executive Producer for Falcons Digital Media. Hi, I'm Saham Ali. I am the Director of Technology for Falcons Creative Group. All right, guys. Well, Cecil talked about building the infrastructure at Falcons that allows us to develop software solutions that have the power to change how people experience entertainment. So, Saham, what was your role in that process, specifically regarding Aeon XP ecosystem? A lot of this had to do with blue sky ideas. And so ideating what it is that we're trying to accomplish and formulating the proper set of tools and technologies that are going to make this happen. So a lot of it was, you know, from the get-go of testing and researching all of the tools that are available to us to achieve the, the mission statement, right? Um, So once all those were identified, then it was a matter of working with Pipeline and our development team to build out the actual functioning infrastructure for what is Aeon XP ecosystem. We have been implementing, uh, you know, software development in our projects and our products for some time now, but to offer it as a core service is we're really excited to kind of bring that out into the forefront. Because software right now is less tangible for a lot of people, um, it's fairly new. There's also a very wide market now and uh, I think appeal for software to come into these brick and mortar locations that may have even been around for a long time. And instead of just looking at renovating the brick and mortar side, they're looking at reinventing how guests experience their venues. What was discussed in the studio to turn the kernel of the idea of Aon XP ecosystem into a sellable product? 
up until this point, we haven't seen the convergence of the networked multiplayer video game world that we live in today and have lived in for a while crossing over into location-based entertainment. So I think that ultimately what Aeon XP ecosystem is doing is filling that gap of having a connected multiplayer online experience that also interacts with a physical, tangible space. So we've talked about Aeon XP ecosystem as one of those types of technology offerings based on our own software development in-house. What are some other examples? Mobile app development has been around for a long time, but we're now extending experiences or creating standalone experiences through the mobile app stores, but also machine learning, artificial intelligence systems, implementation of computer vision. Saham, you want to jump in here? There's, I mean... Yeah, really cool one, you know, is the advent of progressive web apps and and migrating things that have been monolithic applications running on devices that have to be uniquely written. Progressive web apps will be hopefully the evolution of these type of applications, which aren't, you know, stuck to a specific type of hardware. And as it matures, wouldn't it be great to be able to play a mobile game that doesn't require you to connect to the internet, but with somebody else, right? How, How do you do that? Well, Now, with progressive web apps and real-time communication technologies, this is possible. And if you look at everything under our offerings for software development, really it gets divided into two categories. You have your, you know, utilities for operators and developers, and then you have your guest-focused experiences. And some of the products that we're developing, like the Aeon XP ecosystem, really is a hybrid of both, which is very unique. We want to jump in here and, and move over to Saham and ask him exactly what is the Aeon XP ecosystem? Like, what does it do and what makes it revolutionary? The Aeon XP ecosystem is a combination of tools and frameworks that allow you to customize experiences. And the big kicker in all this is allowing users to have agency with dynamic content. So an example would be maybe you are at a theme park that leverages the Aeon XP ecosystem and you go on a ride and do really, really good on that ride. Well, the outcome of that could be a level up or points, et cetera, which then could be redeemed at a food and beverage or going to another attraction and redeeming those to maybe get secret level ups or- You could skip the line skip maybe. Skip the line, gonna... anything. The economy of the Aeon XP ecosystem would allow you to use your XP points or whatever it might be to uh, cash in. So the great part about it is it's no longer limited also to a specific unique geographical location. You can take it home, you know, on your phone at home or on your computer at home or on a flight and continually work towards increasing your character. And then when you go back to said attraction, now that you have leveled up and you go to the exact same ride, maybe the level's different or maybe you have a different path in the ride. Another big part of this is the data analytics portion. So operators are able to now visualize how users are leveraging the entire ecosystem and then based on that, provide feedback. So let's say the five, 10 users in the park were great extreme users. They hit up every attraction location. And then from that, the operator could say, you know what, let's reward these guys. Let's give them free drinks because you have that ability. So Saham, say I buy a ticket for a Kathmandu theme park. Am I going to be given a notification that Aeon XP ecosystem will be available to me? Not quite. The Aeon XP ecosystem in itself is not an app. Rather, Kathmandu would have an app, and Kathmandu's application is actually powered under the hood by Aeon XP's ecosystem to provide guests and operators ways to engage. Okay, so if I go to a different theme park that's not associated with Kathmandu, but this theme park also is using an Aeon XP-powered ecosystem, do I download their app and it's automatic? Absolutely. You simply download their app and just start engaging with it, and you will experience the trigger points and touch points as you normally would. You're not going to see an Aeon XP app. It will be whoever the IP or client or theme park is. It'll be their app that will be powered by Aeon XP ecosystem. Got it. Jason, what if I'm one of those people who doesn't want to download anything on my phone? Is there another way for me to interact or interface with the Aeon XP ecosystem? Oh, absolutely. The most important thing is that you have some way of carrying around your profile, your username. 
And that can be done through a wearable or through other you know, means of being able to check in. And one of the more interesting and probably the most frictionless way would be to do it all through facial recognition, where you don't even need to bring anything. It just knows who you are and that you're on the ride just by being there, which is pretty powerful. And all kind of under the hood, so people wouldn't even know, how does it, how did it know? I just did that ride and I was sitting in seat 12. Right. But there's all this additional opportunity to explore how Aon XP ecosystem can interact and interface with different uh, touch points throughout the parks and beyond. So Saham, Aon XP ecosystem can be networked across multiple venues, which really gets the wheels turning. I mean, talk about infinite possibilities, right? How does it work? And what sorts of venues are we talking about here? The installations could vary from, as we say, you know, LBEs, could be actual retail outlets. It could be physical activation points that are a painting on a wall that could be an augmented reality experience activation. Mm. There's many ways to turn it on. The sky's the limit. It's really hard to put it in a box to say it can do all this. The reality is the tools that are available to us to allow us to connect to the Aon XP ecosystem, give us the freedom to pretty much install it into just about any venue. So you're not limited to rides, you're not limited to physical spaces, um, and you're not limited to devices. Saham brought up player agency before. Jason, could you explain how Aon XP ecosystem plays a role in this important element? For us, agency is twofold. One, it's about creating a representation of yourself, an identity, an individuality to your digital self. And then the other side is being able to custom tailor experiences or outcomes based off of the choices that you make. Those could be preferences. Those could be outcomes of activities that you're doing. But no matter what, at the end of the day, it's about a cause and effect relationship. Okay, so say I'm on a dark ride and I have the Parks app on my phone. Does the backend system that powers the app know I'm on that ride? How does that work? Being on the dark ride, it is, again, connected to the entire ecosystem. The results of your experience on the dark ride would go towards your profile, right? So now when you look at your phone, let's say you scored 10,000 points while you're on the ride. Well, your app will show you you've now leveled up or you got those 10,000 points. What you decide to do with those points It could be physical, it could be digital outcomes, it could be skins, it could be uh, food and beverage. It really could be anything. And the thing is, it's not limited to the physical location where, you know, maybe it's something that you give to somebody that's on the phone only, where you go and do the dark ride. When you get off the dark ride, now on your phone, you might have usable credits or you might have access to a part of the app that you didn't have before that might help you go down another path. It's really ultimately up to the operator as to what they wanna offer and bring to the table. And the framework allows us to provide that. I mean, there's so many different ways to activate not only attractions, but even queue areas. I mean, you can turn a queue area into a scavenger hunt. Ultimately, we're trying to create something that is a multi-layered experience that can be very deep if you want it to be, but also can be very shallow and very easy to navigate if you want it to be as well. So at the end of the day, it's about creating something that's very intuitive, very easy to use, but also has the ability to drill down deeper if you so choose. A great example would be if you did great in this dark ride, imagine walking down a corridor and a screen with a character can pop out and identify you and say, hey man, great job. That type of guest interaction engagement can be done anywhere in the park now. Oh, that sounds interesting. Jason, tell us why an operator is going to want in on this product. For one, I think it's a new way to engage with your customers, unlike anything that's ever been there before, uh, and ultimately drive both guest satisfaction, customer retention, and the repeatability of your venue. So basically, it becomes a different dialogue that you are having with your customer. Mm -hmm. And you're not engaging them even from a marketing standpoint or from a sales standpoint. You're engaging them through the immersive experience and world of the story. And you can connect their gaming experiences to the park to ultimately drive all that. A really uh, interesting example could be maybe the operator finds out he's getting a deal next week on chicken nuggets for F&B. And he's like, you know what? I want to drive people to move more of this product, which in turn might turn into more drink sales, food, whatever. But that's the type of important data you can 
collect and use our platform to get people to go where you want them to go. Mm, interesting. And that's how ANXP's ecosystem rewards both guests and operators. We're going to leave this part of the conversation on that note. Thanks very much for being on the podcast, Aham. Yeah, this was fun. Jason is going to stick around for our next segment. We're going to shift into our conversation now with Scott Demereaux, co-founder of Katmandu. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. You are the chief executive officer for Katmandu. I'm guessing that job keeps you pretty busy. Uh, Yes, uh, it's a fair statement, for sure. Uh, What do you do on a daily basis? Well, you know, the the world has been an interesting place lately with uh, COVID and all the challenges created there. But um, our joint venture with Melia, our uh, hotel partner, has remained incredibly strong. And jointly, we've just been trying to make sure we're taking advantage of every day to uh, keep moving things forward so that as we come out of this, that we actually can uh, accelerate our growth just simply because COVID will ironically actually create some unique development opportunities going forward. So we just want to be ready to take advantage of that. So one thing that we wanted to get into is the larger and larger role that technology does play in the guest experience and theme parks and entertainment in general. So Scott, tell us how Falcons is playing a role in the evolution of attractions at Kathmandu Parks and also how Aon XP ecosystem will enhance the guest experience. We wanted to do something to elevate the rides to truly top-tier, world-class rides and attractions that have never been put into a park our size before. And so over the last couple of years, it's been an exciting journey because truly Kathmandu is unveiling unique rides and attractions, some of which will be world premiere exhibition of these attractions that have just never been put in before. And the market's going to be really shocked at, at what our park is able to deliver. But that was the one challenge that we gave to Falcons in the beginning, and they have met that, and it kind of exceeded our expectations. So when Falcons came back to us with this product, the Aon XP ecosystem, it blew us away because it was everything we dreamt of for the customers. We wanted our our guests to get excited and have anticipation before they came to the park to enhance their experience at the park to literally have a system that we could almost, if you will, unlock personal achievements while you're inside of a theme park. It's almost like playing your own game inside of a game and that you've got your own personalized goals that you're trying to do while you're interacting with big crowds of people that you don't even know or interact with in a theme park. And you know, this is a system that literally advancements of our, our guest will carry from park to park to park all around the world. We're opening up kids' camps and Amelia hotels around the globe, and there will be experiences inside the kids' camps that will tie to their success and and interactions at the park, and literally even our merchandise. Imagine the family having certain elements that are unlocked for them because of an achievement met by somebody. It'll really encourage repeat holidays in the same market. And that's going to be a big driving force, not only for our parks, but imagine what that does for Amelia, our hotel partner, in creating that demand of the family, the kids saying, we want to go back to Kathmandu this year and we want to elevate it. So we think with both the rides and now this technology, Kathmandu is going to be delivering something really unique. And I mean, we just owe a great debt of gratitude to Falcons because they found solutions for us. So it's been great. Both Kathmandu and Falcons are storytellers. That's the strength of both companies. And to be able to bring those imaginative stories to the masses, um, that's something that the Aon XP ecosystem can actually do. How do you see that, Scott, playing into that strength of Falcons and Kathmandu? Well, in so many ways, and again, I, I always like to relate things back to our hotel partner, because one of the things that we've been exploring with Melia is their Melia Rewards, and Melia has more than 12 million active card users. And for years, we've been talking about creating a Melia Rewards Kids. The idea of creating a, a kids program geared around the Kathmandu characters and lore and brand, having online gaming apps, having merchandise, having events, all done through Melia. When we introduced to Melia this Aon XP ecosystem concept, it kind of blew their mind on experiences because all of a sudden they could link Millie Rewards kids to the kids' camps, to kids playing at home, and could actually even tie into console games that are connected into the internet. 
And this experience keeps Kathmandu ever present, matching in very closely. In coming months, we're very excited about some of the media areas that the uh, IP is flowing into. And so this is all part of a broader strategy. But I think it probably is the single most dominant factor in Melia's mind of this idea of truly launching Meal Rewards Kids because it creates so many opportunities for that guest experience. And we are just making sure our product has something for everybody. It's not just for kids, but the kids feel really special and unique when they're there. Ultimately, what's great about Aon XP ecosystem is that it can be scalable. So it's not required that it's fully involved, but there's certainly plenty of opportunity to dive deeper and deeper into the experience and tap into some of these things that are really really common now with young people today, but also are very appealing and familiar for adults who uh, have rewards programs and use these different systems. And it helps breed loyalty, repeatability, and things which are ultimately great for the parks and for the resorts. But there's really a, a larger picture here, which is getting people into the world of Kathmandu and being fans of the property, but also part of the larger storytelling experience that's going to be, you know, in the next few years rolling out with Kathmandu. There is no question that we will be expanding the relationships. We'll have other partnerships similar to what we have with Melia outside of the hotel world. And what we are, have a high degree of confidence on is the adaptability of this Aon XP ecosystem is as we develop new relationships and we make a choice to bring them into the Kathmandu world, it can be expanded and adapted. So that's one of the benefits that we'll be able to tout to them becoming partners with Kathmandu. Can you speak to how Aon XP ecosystem will change the game for guests and not just kids, but adults too? The biggest attribute of a Kathmandu park is how we turn it into a competitive challenge for our guests that are related to each other while playing in a larger environment with thousands of other guests around you. And Aeon XP really allows us to, the mom and dad or the teenage brothers that are really trying to compare their skills and abilities. Now we're not talking about just scoring on a ride. We're talking about scoring on a park, or we're talking about scoring over a week of going to a park and and doing multiple attractions. And so it's a cumulative ability to measure your results against somebody else, and we think it can really jack up those competitive juices, and that's a key part to any park that wants reoccurring revenue and people to come back. You really want to get better at our rides and attractions to score higher. As a guest, I could definitely personalize my experience using the system. But on the opposite side, park operators can also personalize the experience through what they do. Can you go into some of those details, Scott? We gather through the system a lot of information about our customers, their preferences. It's simple as which attractions do they go to first when they arrive at the park, which is an indication of where their interests are. Imagine this at our hotels. We can then take that information and draw conclusions and create experiences in their room, in their dining experience, out by the pool that are catered to what their preferences were. Again, as Jason spoke earlier, kind of on a seamless basis that they're really asking themselves, how did they know that I would find that really cool? And so it's a unique way to just deliver for us 100% of the time, guest experience. That's what's going to make or break our company in the future and and the big differentiator. And this is going to be a big help in allowing us to do that with, with knowledge and being smart about how to do it efficiently. And you know, every guest is different and what they... Uh, look for in their experience is different. And to be able to custom tailor that experience and give them what they ultimately want or maybe what they didn't know they wanted, that is really a very powerful differentiator, I think, from anything that's out there in the market. Absolutely. It's what's got us really excited about this product. Guys, thank you so much for this enlightening conversation. Scott, thanks for being with us today. Thanks. Really enjoyed it. And Jason, thanks as always. Very happy to be here. Back at the table now is Cecil. Um, wow, what yeah. a conversation. It's incredible. I'm curious to get your thoughts on, on everything. What stuck out to you? Oh, my head's spinning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, obviously I was part of living and breathing the development of this amazing product. Definitely any of those out there listening is interested in purchasing this amazing product. Please contact our Falcons licensing team. But, you know, my head's spinning because, you know, when we start to look at 
The initial mission statement of developing when I worked with the team and started to define what this could be, we started to peel away the capabilities, which was just, it was almost endless what it answered. And it continues to add so much value to the guest experience. It's so it's impressive. It's almost like a bottomless pit of yeah. opportunities that it has. And to have someone already acquire and purchase it for multiple parks is a big deal. And so we're really proud of what we've done. It really is an infinite world of possibilities. <laughs> yes, it really is. All right. Well, thank you, Cecil. You bet. We want to thank our guests again, CEO of Katmandu, Scott Demereau, our Vice President of Digital Media, Jason Ambler, and our Director of Technology, Saha Mali. And everyone who listened, thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. We hope you're back with us next time. Thank you for listening to Experience Imagination, a Falcons Creative Group production. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the podcast and share with your friends. To keep up with our latest news, visit us on the web at falconscreativegroup.com and follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future episodes, please email us at podcast at falconscreativegroup.com.